In this video, we're going to learn about nucleic acids, which are world famous for being the genetic material in all organisms. DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid is a type of nucleic acid that is the genetic material in all prokaryotes, eukaryotes and a lot of viruses. RNA or ribonucleic acid, which is another type of nucleic acid, is the genetic material in some viruses. But apart from those viruses, all other organisms in the world have DNA as their genetic material. Now, nucleic acids like carbohydrates and proteins are macromolecules, which means that they are made up of individual monomers attached to each other to form a large molecule. And the individual monomer found in nucleic acids is known as a nucleotide. Nucleotides are the monomers of nucleic acids and each nucleotide be it in DNA or RNA is made up of these three structures. One is a phosphate group which is attached to a pentose sugar. Pentose because it is made up of five carbons that is in turn attached to a nitrogenous base. A nitrogenous base because this has nitrogen containing functional groups. So a nucleotide has a phosphate group a sugar, a pentose sugar and a nitrogenous base. Now you may be wondering why are DNA and RNA called nucleic acids? Well initially when DNA was discovered, it was discovered to be present inside the nucleus of the cell. And then later when more studies were performed, it was discovered that DNA not only exists inside the nucleus as in eukaryotes, but in prokaryotes it existed in the cytoplasm of the cell also, even if there was no nucleus present. What about the term acid? Why are they called nucleic acids? We'll learn about that in just a while. Now that we are familiar with the nucleotide structure, the basic nucleotide structure of a nucleic acid, let's learn more about a nucleotide structure of DNA. And this is how a DNA nucleotide looks like. It has a phosphate group, a nitrogenous base and a pentose sugar which is called deoxyribose. Now why is it deoxyribose? Because when you compare it with ribose, which is a sugar found in RNA, there is no oxygen here, which would make this a hydroxyl functional group OH. There is no oxygen here, it is just one hydrogen group. That's why it is called deoxyribose. So DNA is made up of a phosphate group, which is attached to a deoxyribose sugar, which is in turn attached to a nitrogenous base. Now nitrogenous bases, which are found in both DNA and RNA, are made up of heterocyclic rings. This ring shaped structure here, they are called a heterocyclic ring. And in DNA, four such nitrogenous bases are found, adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. In this, adenine and guanine have two fused ring structures. They are made up of two fused heterocyclic rings. They are known as purines. Cytosine and thymine have just one heterocyclic ring and they are known as pyrimidines. Before we learn how a DNA macromolecule is formed, let's try to understand the numbering of the carbons in this deoxyribose sugar. This is carbon 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. From the right, it's numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. With that, let's move on to how a DNA macromolecule is formed. Now here you can see two nucleotides are attached to each other and so on forming a larger structure. Now what is this bond that links the two nucleotides together? That is a phosphodiester bond and that is formed between the phosphate group of one nucleotide. This is one nucleotide. This has its phosphate group that attaches to the hydroxyl group found attached to the third carbon of the next nucleotide. So this is the third carbon of this nucleotide that has a hydroxyl group to which this phosphate group bonds forming a phosphodiester bond. As more and more phosphodiester bonds are formed, this pentose sugar and this phosphate group form a sugar phosphate backbone and from that backbone the nitrogenous bases are projected inwards. This allows for two strands of DNA that run in opposite directions to form complementary base pairs. 
Now we'll learn more about this direction of DNA when we learn about the proper structure of DNA. But for now, you can understand that they run in opposite directions, which allows for the formation of complementary base pairing between the nitrogenous bases. So these two bases form hydrogen bonds and form complementary base pairing. This leads to the formation of the double helical structure of DNA that we're familiar with that looks something like this. This is a sugar phosphate backbone and in a DNA double helix, adenine always base pairs with thymine, cytosine always base pairs with guanine. Here you can see this is adenine that is base paired with thymine. This is cytosine that is base paired with guanine. Now this structure took a lot of scientists a lot of time and effort to be discovered. It was eventually discovered in the year 1953. With this, let's move on to RNA and this is how the nucleotide or single monomer of RNA looks like. It's quite similar to the nucleotide of DNA, right? There is a phosphate group, there is a pentose sugar and there is a nitrogenous base. But here in the case of RNA, the pentose sugar is called ribose because it has a hydroxyl group here and not just a hydrogen group because oxygen is present. It's called a ribose sugar and not deoxyribose. So that is one difference between RNA and DNA. The pentose sugar is a ribose sugar in RNA. Three of the nitrogenous bases are common between DNA and RNA. Adenine, guanine and cytosine are common. But instead of thymine, RNA has something called uracil. Now uracil and thymine are structurally almost similar. They just have one small difference. There is no methyl group here in uracil whereas methyl group is found in thymine. But RNA contains only uracil and DNA contains only thymine. Now that we have understood the basic structures of RNA and DNA, let's try to finish answering the question, why are they called nucleic acids? Well, look at this phosphate group. It contains oxygen atoms and these oxygen atoms have a negative charge on them. This negative charge impacts acidic properties on the molecules, which is why RNA and DNA are called nucleic acids. With that, let's move on to how a macromolecular structure of RNA is formed. Phosphodiester bond is what links two consecutive nucleotides in RNA as well. Here you can see the phosphate group bound to the 3' prime hydroxyl of this nucleotide and then so on. However, unlike DNA, RNA does not form stable double-stranded structures except in the case of some viruses where RNA double-stranded RNA is the genetic material. Apart from those cases, stable double-stranded RNA is quite rare in the cells. Instead, RNA is capable of forming different types of structures called messenger RNA, transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA. These structures serve an important function. They are involved in the production of proteins in the cell. That's the job of RNA basically. DNA contains the information to synthesize proteins and RNA takes that information and synthesizes the proteins. If you took a look at the structure of transfer RNA or tRNA, it looks like it's a double stranded structure, right? But it's not. It's just a single strand of RNA that has folded upon itself forming a clover leaf type structure and this structure is quite interesting and we'll learn more about this in higher classes.